Hello everyone and welcome back. Dom here and on this video I promise you we're going to have loads of fun. I'm going to build a haunting horror theme fully suited for a Halloween soundtrack. And I'm going to do this completely from scratch using a wide palette of sounds from synths to orchestral instruments. I'm also going to introduce to you two brand new libraries for Patchop. Bewitcher, which contains spine-chilling atmospheres and spooky sounds, and Kingdom, a library with incredible ethnic, otherworldly granular cinematic sounds. So, let's get into Cubase and let's create some spooky music. So, before we begin, I want to introduce you to the sound palette that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to use sounds from different libraries, I'm going to use orchestral sounds, I'm going to use synths, so let's get started. I always like to have all the sounds ready to go. I prepare before I start composing or recording so that I have everything in place and I don't have to stop when I'm in the mood and I'm concentrated, right? So let me show you what I've done here already. I've laid down a very basic underscore, like atmospheric sounds. So I'm using the sounds from Bewitcher and I'm using the sounds from Kingdom to lay down a little bit of a mood. It's not really notes, it's more like an atmosphere. So let's listen to it. Cats from the underworld. These are all single notes, right? So this is going to be my intro, okay? I'm going to lay down some music over these layers. But you're already in a mood, right? And that's where we're going to have the interlude. Let's listen to this. Beautiful. And then we're going to have the Zanger Beast. So, this is very straightforward. These are mostly, mostly single notes that I use to set the mood. As you can see, there's not much there. Now we're going to get to the stuff where we play some cool sounds, but this already helps me have a little bit of a mood so I can compose, you know? That's what you want. So, let's see. I'm going to start with the vertigo strings, okay? I'm going to start laying down some notes, a little bit of an undertone. Let's see. Leave some space here because then we're going to have in here I'm going to introduce my theme okay very nice and clear Great. Now, these vertical strings help me get a little bit of a harmony. Okay, this is mainly going to be based in the root notes. So I'm going to use D minor as my key here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to immediately show you what my theme is going to be for this track. And for this, I'm going to use the Celesta and the Glockenspiel at the same time. So the theme that I'm going to use for this track is going to be this one. So 
So let's record this. I'm going to record this right here, straight after this interlude that I have in mind. So click, because I'm gonna need a click here. That's my theme. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this a few times because I'm going to use it a couple of times here. There we go. Now that I have my theme, I'm going to start building towards that theme, okay? So I'm going to give the listener a few hints here and there that it's coming, but I'm not going to play it from the very beginning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this hellish purity sound and now I'm going to record a few hints of this theme. Something like that, let's try this. I'm going to leave it very free at the beginning, so I'm not going to care about the metronome. I'm going to turn it off and let's record. Great, that's what I need. That's all I need from this really intriguing piano sound. But then what I want is right here, I want to add this, you know, goblin stabs. Let's do this. For this, I'm going to use the click track because I want to get a little bit of groove, okay? One, two, three. Yes, perfect. Let's see what else we can add here. I think for the very beginning, we're okay. Now, I'm going to start working on this interlude, okay? So this is going to be a little bit of a bang, but I'm not going to introduce the theme yet. So let's try this. So what do we have here? I have this catacomb stab. Okay, great. Now, I also need another stab. For this, I'm going to use Rasta. That's all I need, one note. That's enough, let's do this. Great, you know, we only need one color from every synth. Let's try this rise impact from Backbone. Let's start building the tension right here. So I build the tension and now we have this nice impact right there. Now, let's introduce some nice orchestral sounds, right? I'm going to use my strings low from Iconic Ensembles to start creating this string ostinato here. Yes. Something like that. Let's try this. I'm going to keep it simple because I'm going to have this haunting melody on top of this. So I want this to be in a nice foundation, okay? So let's do that. So let's record the strings. and theme, okay? Good, now let's build this foundation and then we will add this theremin melody on top of it, right? So we have the strings, now let's record our choir. Just the male choir for now.
beautiful. Now, let's make it even stronger. Timpanis, Iconica. Nice. Brass. Some nice low brass. Again, iconic ensembles. Yes. Good. Now, I think we're good for here. Let's try and record this sound. So, as I said, we're going to use Glowing Luminary from Kingdom. And I'm going to pair it with this theremin from Retrolog. Okay? So, let's play both of them. I'm going to record and enable both of them. And now, let's play a spooky melody on top. Okay, as you can tell, I'm using a lot of tritones there to get this kind of... And... Okay, lots of tritones. They will always give you this kind of haunting quality to your music. It's the devil's interval, like they used to call it in the Middle Ages. And fun fact, it was banned from music. So, let's move on to the rest of the arrangement. And now we're going to go into our main theme and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this theme and kind of expand it and then we will finish our track so let's listen to the theme once See that Zanger Beast? How cool it sounds, you know, along with the theme, even if it doesn't have any, you know, pitch quality there. It's amazing. So, what I'm gonna do now, I need just one little thing for this theme. I'm going to use the triangle from Iconica Sections and Players. Because I want to add a little bit of rhythm already, okay? Let's do this. And then, now we're going to have a nice big bang, so I'm going to use... Okay, this crescendo, because we also have a roll for the triangle. Now, let's start building this section, okay? We're going to keep the theme right there, but now the orchestra is going to be in the front. So, I'm going to start with my low strings. So now I'm going to change the motive on my low strings because I want to annotate the harmony that we have right there. So it's like... You know? So I'm going to try and pinpoint a little bit of this harmony. This is going to be a very static uh, piece in terms of harmony, but the orchestration will drive it. So let's record the low strings. Thank you. 
So there we go. Now we have our foundation and I'm going to keep building this to make it bigger and bigger. I'm going to add choirs. I'm going to add the brass. I'm going to add the timpanis. Let's do this now because this is going to hold everything together. Okay, let's do the timpani now. Brass, low brass, okay? Let's do this. Same thing, I'm trying to make this root note stronger and stronger. Choirs. And now the real fire, now we're going to have our strings from Iconica Ensembles. We're going to have these nice spiccato strings. And this will also drive the piece, the very last section where we have the triplets. So let's try this. So as you can hear, this sound is really... Really nice and powerful. Let's record. Right? Great! Okay, some percussion now from Backbone. Let's listen to this. We want this cinematic element here, okay? Yes, this added a little bit to the groove. Now let's go for something else. Now I'm going to add some harp. This is from Iconica Sections and Players and this is going to help me do the build up. Actually, I'm going to start with a harp from the theme when it plays on its own, okay? So I'm going to start because it's beautiful. I'm going to play some really quiet notes. Let's do this. And then I'm going to do, okay? to have this kind of build-up. Quiet first.
Now, let's add the female choir. And the female choir is Olympus Choir. And I'm going to add some nice hits, some nice stabs from them. Let's do this. Yes, nice. So again, I'm using the same channel. So I have the male on the left hand and the female choir on the right hand. Now I'm going to add some, you know, high brass sounds. And these come from Iconica Ensembles again. I mean, these sounds are amazing. Let's have some brass accents there. And now I'm going to add the last element of this piece, and this is the cartoon orchestra. To add a little bit of playful, okay, element to these sounds. So this, I'm going to add it from the interlude. So I'm going to start from there. I'm going to record, and I'm going to reach until the end of this piece. And as you can see, I have... You know, some bassoons there. Actually, let's start from the top. And then we can also listen to the entire track. Happy Halloween, guys. <laughs>